Hi, my name is Susan Harris. I'm an instructor at Workshop 13. I teach beginning and intermediate watercolor classes. I will be presenting several brief video demonstrations on some watercolor techniques. So let's get started. Hello, Susan Harris here. Today I'm going to demonstrate trees. What I've done is prepared my paper by taping it down to the board and just created a, a soft muted background to give you an idea of uh, the sense of a painting. We're not going to complete a painting today and I left it soft enough so that you could clearly see the, um, the design of the trees and the branches. I'm going to use just a few brushes today. This is a big one. This is of number 12. And then I have a smaller one for which is a number 6 for some smaller trees. And these are two liner rigger brushes. This is a rigger, they're both called riggers, but they could be called a script brush or a liner or, or a rigger. This is an older brush, but still very sufficient for what we're going to be using. And you can see, if I wet the brush, it comes to a really fine point, but because the, the uh, bristles are long, they hold a lot of paint, so you don't have to keep going back and forth. This is going to be, um, as I say, a demonstration on trees and how they are in relationship to the, your painting. And I'm not going to use a reference, which um, I you know, almost always do, and I do recommend using a reference photo. But we're just going to make this up as we go along so that you can see how I make trees. This is my palette. It's going to, it's going to very, use very um, limited amount of colors today. I don't generally use a strict brown. I like to make brown from French Ultra or Ultramarine Blue and a Burnt Sienna in maybe a little bit more blue or brown, the brown, depending on the kind of tree. So let's just get started here by making what I call a puddle of the French Ultra. I'm going to wet my brush, dampen it a little bit, take a little bit of the paint, put it on my palette, and then a little bit of the Burnt Sienna and mix that in together until I get a brown that I like. If it's, not, if it's too blue, you add a little bit more burnt sienna. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to add some water to it to get to the consistency that I like. And make the puddle big enough so that you don't have to keep going back and forth and making it bigger. Because we're going to be making a lot of trees, so we're going to need a lot of that. So that's basically my, my puddle. <clears throat> I'm going to roll my brush around in it so it comes, it comes to a point. And if you go outside and you look at the trees, the ones that are right in front of you, you, you can't see the tops almost. They go right off the page. So this tree is going to start here, and it's going to be in the foreground, so it's going to go right off the page. And it's always important that the bottom of the tree trunk is much larger than the top. It gets smaller, the smaller, smaller, smaller as you go up. So we're going to start here on this tree. As I say, we're making this up. This is the bottom of the trunk. And you often do see a trunk that splays out at the bottom, but not always. This one's just going to be a little bit. I like to make them straight. And you can see from the brush, I'm going to push down on the brush. And as I get closer to the top, I'm going to roll it around and get smaller, 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 smaller. It goes right off of the page. It's right off the page. Because this we're really close up, and you can't see the top of that if you were standing right here. I've got a lot of water on here. And if you can clean up your edges a little bit, it doesn't have to be really straight. Trunks are not that straight. Trees are wiggly. But notice how much smaller it is at the top than it is at the bottom. And I'm going to make another one. It's important with your composition that you don't make all of your trees starting up in a row. They're forward and back, one's in front, one's in back and also that the ones in the back are smaller. You can see that I made a small, very distant tree line there just to give you some sense of distance. It's not important, I just put it there so that we have some kind of background. But notice how I'm working in watercolor, you always work from light to dark. You're always going darker, darker. So I had to lay in my background of the sky and of the trees in the back before I did my trees. Otherwise, I'd be brushing over this bright, big brown trunk and it would all blend together. So I'm going to start another one about right here. Still using my fairly good sized brush because these are big trunks and I want to get as much paint on there as I can. So this one's going to be in back of the other one but about the same size, maybe a little smaller. 
Again, we're making this up. I'm just going back in and straightening out my edges a bit. Now, as you can see, this looks like it's some type of field here. And in order, another cool thing that you can do on the bottom of your trees to make it look realistic is I've got my smaller brush here, my number six. I'm just going to bring this down a bit with some ragged edges to make it look like there's grass. So that I'm, this is negative painting. I'm not painting the grass. I'm painting the tree trunk behind the grass and it makes it look like there's grass there. And it may not be that straight. So this one looks like it might be going down on a hill. I can take my smaller brush and thin this out some, straighten it out. And notice, I don't know if you can see on the demo, but when watercolor is wet, it's shiny. And you can look, tip your head to the side, and you can see that it's shiny. But now these two trees look very two-dimensional. They don't look, they look flat. In order to make a tree look like it's round, what we do is scrape off some of the paint or push the paint from one side to the other to make it look round. And I'm going to do this with a razor blade. It's not an easy process to learn. But and I don't recommend it for a beginner necessarily. Uh, but it, or, or maybe you want to do it in practice. This is my razor blade, my trusty razor blade. I paint it blue so I don't lose it. And the shine on my trees, I don't know if you can see it. Kind of, it's almost, it's almost gone. But what I'm going to do with this is push this paint. I'm going to cup my blade just a bit. And I'm going to push this paint from one side to the other. And when I do that makes a highlight on the tree from one side and it's all it's, it's vital that you notice in your painting in your photograph your reference where the light source is coming from in this case the light source is coming from here so this the this side of the tree is lighter all the trees would be the same the light source should be consistent I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to show you an easier way to do this that might not be as frightening as using a razor blade but what I've done is create some depth in those trees. And the other way to do that would be using an oil painter's technique. And I'll do it from my left hand here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to push this paint pretty dry. After it's dry, which is good because it's easy. I'm going to push this paint from one side to the other. But you can see that makes it pretty smooth. And when you use the razor blade, you're skimming over the top of the paper. This is rough paper. It's 140, cold press, so it's kind of bumpy. So it's just pushing that paint off, and it doesn't. Um, it leaves it in, in the groove, so it makes it a little bumpy. So I'm going to start with my branches here with my script brush, my rigger. This is, as I say, it's an old brush, but still very functional. And this is... The tr this tree is in back of that tree. So I'm going to make a branch. And again, it's smaller at the bottom, smaller at the top than the bottom. The same thing with the branch. When it gets closer to the trunk, it's fat and then it works its way thinner, thinner, thinner. And I like to make threes, but notice when I move the brush up, I'm lifting up and make sure you lift up this at the end. And I like the notches. I usually take a notch and start another branch. So this would be another branch here. And it wouldn't be, then they're not all the same. The other important thing is this is a tree, and if, if, unless the, it was destroyed or damaged in a storm or cut by man, it always has one uh, plant, a tree, whatever. It always has one big stalk if it's a tree type plant and that's called the leader and it goes it right usually goes right off the page but it doesn't usually have a branch sticking out like a Y right next to it they alternate so make sure you're not making even branches on either side so I'm going to start this one a little bit higher than the other one let me get some thicker paint in here I'm going to start right in the middle, and this one can go right off the page that way. But they're all different. The important thing is that they're very skinny at the top. And 
And this tree might have a pretty good sized branch coming off of it, as long as it's not fatter than the trunk. If you, if you end up with a really fat trunk at the top, just make it bigger at the bottom. Unless you're trying to imitate that your photograph identically, which is very hard to do. This is probably a maple tree. The trees are, the branches are usually fairly straight and they usually make a nice globe shape at the top. Oak trees, on the other hand, are very, I like to use the word craggy, they're very crooked looking, kind of witchy looking. Okay, see how I got a really got make that came out really fat? It's like a little happy accident, happens a lot in watercolor. We're just going to make that branch a little bit bigger. And you just keep going and going until you get to a point where you think you have enough. Don't have to overdo it. These might go straight off, but make sure that the ones at the top go straight off the page, right off of your painting, because they're way at the top. And you can add more at the bottom if you want, depending on how many you have. You'd have more on this side. So these two are in the front. They go right off the page. They're closer to you. I'm going to make another one over here with my number six brush only because the trunk's going to be a little bit thinner and it'll give me a little more control. So this one's going to be farther back. So I'm going to start it in a different plane, plane higher than that one. Same technique though, but it may not go all the way off the page. It can stop, take a breath. If you get to a point where it's scary, just take a breath. Take my real skinny rigger and just make it about like that. And then do the same thing with the branches. Branch, 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 branch. And they can cross over. They can be crooked. Just gotta make sure that it's, it, that it's believable. What I'm trying to, to avoid, and you should always avoid, trying to make, don't make lollipop trees. They don't all balls at the top. They don't all end up the same way. They don't all start at the same plane. So that even that tree, even though that tree may be as large as these, it's farther away, so it's shorter. Kind of get the idea. And notice when I scraped out that the background is much is is is, thin, is vague, you know, <laughs> It's muted enough so that when I scratched out. I was able to take the color off of the off the background trees. It doesn't always happen depending on the color that you use. That's just a light wash of some cerulean blue in the sky and some olive green and a little bit of raw umber in the trees. I may have thrown some blue in there too. But that's pretty much a leafless tree. And as I say, you can keep going and going to your heart's content until they look either like your photograph or they look realistic. Those would be, and then way, way in the background here, I might have some coming off of, a, let's see if I can do this without my sleeve, coming off of that tree line. They would be really small and probably close together. Notice the difference in the relationship of where they are in the painting, that it makes sense that these are smaller because they're really far away. And make sure, I just did it myself, make sure that all your branches touch the trunk. If you start out here by mistake, make sure you join it. Make sure that area towards the trunk is bigger than the end of the trunk, the, the branch. So there you go. That is a very brief, quick demonstration on trees. Thank you.